Hey everyone, how's it going? Thanks so much for tuning in. For today's video, we're going to be checking out something a little bit different. This is a mint condition 2001 Chrysler LHS. As a former 300M owner, I had always wanted to drive the LHS and see how it differed from the 300M or even one of the newer Concorde Limiteds, but I haven't gotten my chance to do so until now. It's not one of those cars probably a lot of people get excited about necessarily, but this will be a lot of fun for me and I hope you guys enjoy. As always, this is going to be a detailed, in-depth review of the LHS. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, go over the performance data, take it on a thorough road test and show you many of the unique aspects throughout the interior as well as exterior. I'd like to extend a big thanks to my dad Bill and his dealership Car Connections Incorporated in Reedsville, North Carolina for allowing me to borrow this example today. For more information about the dealership including contact info and current inventory, please feel free to check out his website provided in the description box below. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop on in, start it up, let her run. This example is finished in bright silver metallic paired to a dark slate gray royale leather interior with partial perforations across the middle of the seats. The LHS features speed-sensitive rack and pinion steering with hydraulic power assistance, all routed through a leather-wrapped four-spoke multifunction steering wheel. The overall ratio is 17 to 1. Out on the road, the behavior is direct and precise, especially for a large luxury car, rivaling the segment's best. It also offers the driver an appreciable level of feel and feedback that puts a priority on comfort and relaxed behaviors, but keeps you in the know of what's happening with the front wheels. The drive is very much like a softer 300M as they offer a lot of chassis and suspension similarities. The steering takes 3.1 turns to lock. Thanks to the clever packaging of the powertrain and the LH platform, the turning diameter is a relatively tight 37.6 feet, but more details on that later in the video. A manual tilting steering wheel came standard, but a telescoping feature was not offered. The only transmission available was a 4-speed automatic transmission, albeit slightly different from the one used in the 300M. The latter featured auto-stick manual shifting ability. The LHS's gearbox shared with the Concorde can be placed in 3rd gear manually or low gear for when traveling down steep grades. The console shifter is leather-wrapped and comfortable to grip. The mirrors automatically tilt down on both sides when you place the car in reverse. No column shifters were offered aside from Concorde spec with the front bench seat. Performance of the transmission is exactly what you'd expect from an older 4-speed, smooth but not exactly engaging, especially at low speeds where it exhibits gentle transitions, but hey, that's what you'd want in a vehicle like this. In that regard, it seems to do a great job. When pushed harder, the transmission actually becomes more responsive, quickening the shifts with more authoritative feel. All of the LH cars were front-wheel drive. Now let's go ahead and switch on the automatic projector headlamps, fog lamps, as well as the hazards. The driver's side window is automatic down. And we'll go ahead and check out the exterior, shall we? For 1994, Chrysler introduced the all-new LHS alongside a redesigned New Yorker, a year after the 1993 debut of the revolutionary LH platform that underpinned the Concorde, Dodge, and Trepid and Eagle Vision. While the New Yorker was more traditional in its styling, the LHS was branded as more of a driver's car with a splash of European flavor. They each represented the longest offerings in the LH fleet. Inspired by the chassis used in the Eagle Premier, a car developed between American Motors Corporation and Renault in the late 1980s, the LH platform featured a similar powertrain configuration but was entirely new from the ground up, with a longer wheelbase and a wider track. 
Replacing some of the offerings based on the antiquated K-Car platform, LH represented a new direction for Chrysler. A hallmark of the LH platform was the signature cab forward layout, which placed the passenger compartment ahead of the rear wheels while extending the windshield over the front wheels. This allows the rear wheels to sit towards the rear edges of the chassis, eliminating wheel well intrusion into the passenger compartment and allowing for a greater flexibility of interior room. In other words, the car's body can be stretched, such as with the LHS in New Yorker, to vary the car's overall length for more rear seat and trunk space, even though you're using a common wheelbase. Quite ingenious. Even though the cars were front-wheel drive, they featured engines that were longitudinally mounted, which allowed for a lower hood line, easier maintenance, and the tighter turning diameter, like I mentioned earlier, in addition to maximizing overall interior space. The second generation of LH cars were launched for 1998, beginning with the Concorde and Intrepid. The new LHS and 300M would follow for 1999. The New Yorker was dropped after 1996, while the 300M was technically destined to be the next Eagle Vision before the brand's discontinuation, prompting a quick rebrand. Continuing on the same wheelbase as the earlier cars, the Gen 2 cars received a host of chassis revisions and other improvements including a thoroughly updated engine lineup that took the cars to a whole new level of engineering, refinement, and driving dynamics to rival the segment's best. The new LHS benefited from a redesigned body and white that not only helped it reduce weight in key areas but boosted interior shoulder space, trunk space, and side impact protection. In addition to increasing torsional rigidity and bending strength by 37 and 46 percent respectively. More lightweight, high-strength steels were used in the front and rear longitudinal rails, B-pillars, and door beams, which helped save around 40 pounds. An aluminum hood was even used on both the LHS and the Concorde, a first for a higher-volume Chrysler product, reducing weight by 19 pounds over a comparable steel structure. Along with a new cross-car beam underneath the instrument panel for added torsional and steering column stiffness, the front and rear suspensions received updated geometry. All of this put together led to cars that were designed to deliver more innate road feel than what you'd expect out of this class, making them feel more connected and dynamic. The LHS is nearly 10 inches longer than a 300M, but 1.4 inches shorter than a Concorde. All of them shared the same length wheelbases, width, and height. Of course, with the added length came greater passenger and cargo space. In terms of rank, I'd describe the Concorde as the entry-level big car with less powerful engine options and a simpler, less premium interior. The LHS was full-on luxury sedan, while the 300M was the sportiest offering. The latter was also more friendly towards the European market. To this day, I've always considered the styling to be one of the car's strong points. The LHS specifically is such a presence, long, sleek, and curvy to the point I think you can compare it to the four-door coupe styling we see a lot of nowadays. The sloping silhouette is highly aerodynamic, boasting a drag coefficient of just .308. The body lines flow smoothly and evenly from the hood and over the roof line before tapering over the deck lid, creating a sense of motion. At its introduction, the LHS was the only LH car to feature full projector headlamps. The egg crate grille, chrome detailing, and glossy black trim pieces are nice finishing touches. I especially like the prominent polished exhaust tips out back. For 2001, the LHS came with an MSRP of $28,680 and was designed to compete against other similar front-wheel drive domestic luxury sedans such as the Buick Park Avenue, Lincoln Continental, and the Oldsmobile Aurora. In comparison, the 300M started at $29,640 for 2001, while the Concorde started at $22,510. There was a number of a la carte options available, but for the most part, the LHS was offered in one well-equipped trim level. After 2001, the LHS nameplate was dropped and replaced by the new Concorde Limited, same car but with a different badge. The latter would be produced through 2004 before the new rear-wheel drive LX platform cars debuted for 2005. The LHS came standard with 17 by 7 inch 5 split spoke aluminum wheels that could be had in either painted silver like this example or clad in chrome. They're wrapped in 22555 all season tires. Providing good stopping power and pedal feel are four wheel disc brakes. The front discs are internally ventilated and measure 11.7 inches in diameter. The solid rear discs measure 10.6 inches. All are clamped down by single piston calipers that can bring the car to a stop in about 130 feet from 60 miles an hour. ABS, traction control, and electronic brake force distribution also came standard. Keeping the discs cool up front are dedicated cooling channels in the underside of the fascia. The suspension is fully independent, consisting of McPherson struts in front and Chapman struts in the rear, along with front and rear stabilizer bars. Up front, a hydroform steel subframe supports the suspension and powertrain while delivering an added measure of rigidity. 
Unlike the 300M, which was tuned to deliver a sportier handling profile and a firmer ride, the LHS is more about comfort and luxury. The ride is smooth and for the most part isolates you from vibrations and harshness. It feels stable and solid, especially at higher speeds with well-controlled body roll. Road noise is kept to a minimum. Despite the fact that the LHS is more comfort oriented, it still handles itself rather well and delivers an appreciable level of road feedback without upsetting the ambiance. At least for its class, it doesn't have that detached floaty ride you'd expect out of a large American luxury sedan at the time. It's relatively agile and exhibits a lot of control through the corners and undulations, not that far off from a 300M, just a bit softer. All in all, the LHS drives fantastic, a good blend of dynamics and comfort. Overall length is 207.7 inches with a width of 74.4 inches and a height of 56 inches. Wheelbase is 113 inches while curb weight is around 3,574 pounds. The LHS and 300M were powered by Chrysler's second generation high output 3.5 liter V6 introduced for the 1999 model year. It's an all-aluminum engine positioned longitudinally that features single overhead cams, four valves per cylinder, sequential multi-port fuel injection, and a variable intake system. The latter alters the length of the runners in the three plenum composite intake manifold at different engine speeds. It was one of the best performing V6s of its time, quiet, smooth, responsive, and reliable. Compared to its predecessor, which launched back in the early 90s with the debut of the LH cars, the new engine benefited from a number of revisions including more efficient airflow, a larger throttle body, larger intake valves, a larger diameter exhaust system, and more. It developed more power and torque while at the same time reducing emissions and improving fuel economy by up to 10%. The compression ratio is rated between 10 and 10.1 to 1 for the LHS and 300M respectively. Inside, there's cast-in iron bore liners, cross-bolted main bearing caps, and a forged steel crankshaft. The red line is 6,600 RPM. At the time, it was the brand's premium engine option. A detuned variant was also shared with the Dodge Intrepid RT, in addition to other smaller variants used in the Concorde and lower-end Intrepids. Power differed slightly between the applications, with the 300M being the most powerful at 253 horsepower and 255 pound-feet of torque. The LHS, on the other hand, developed 250 horsepower at 6,400 RPM and 250 pound-feet of torque at 3,900 RPM. While all of the engines were able to run on regular 87 octane, Chrysler's 3.5 liters optimized to run on mid-grade fuel for maximum performance. On the other hand, the Intrepid RT, which produced 242 horsepower and 248 pound-feet of torque, took regular fuel. Along with more aggressive gearing, the 300M was able to hit 60 miles an hour in the low 7 second range. The LHS takes a little longer between 7.5 and, and 8 seconds, still rather quick for the time in class. Top speed was electronically governed to about 120 miles an hour. The LHS carries a 17 gallon tank and was originally rated between 18 miles to a gallon in the city and 17 on the highway. The interiors of Chrysler's LH cars were class leading for their time. While not quite Cadillac level, it's comfortable, roomy, and quiet with excellent ergonomics, build quality, and appointments. Between the LHS and 300M, the layout and overall feel was nearly identical with just a few subtle differences mainly pertaining to the center console and rear seat area. We'll discuss the latter in just a bit. The 99 through 01 Concorde was also very similar, albeit not quite as premium of a look, featuring more significant differences with its dash and door designs. The majority of the touch points throughout the cabin are finished in soft touch material. It all feels upscale and luxurious, complemented by beautiful curves, a seamless dash, and classically styled white faced instruments, including a center mounted analog clock, all with light blue electroluminescent lighting. The driver's side window is automatic down and there's good storage in the lower front door panels. The seats are 8 way power adjusting for both the driver and passenger. Heated front seats came standard while the driver's seat featured manual lumbar and two person memory. The memory also recalls your power mirror positioning and radio presets. They're very comfortable with a lot of padding and a surprising amount of lateral support. The leather feels high quality and the perforations across the midsection allow them to breathe on hot days. The headrest and seatbelts are adjustable. One thing I find so cool about this particular example are the felt-lined sunglass storage trays positioned at the top of the B-pillars for the driver and passenger. I've never seen them before, so I can only imagine they were optional features. Regardless, they're quite handy. The glove box door and lower dash is also padded. It's able to be locked and offers good storage space. 
The faux wood trim you see across the doors and dash came standard, but a new option for both the 300M and the LHS for 2001 was genuine California walnut wood trim. If specified, you'd also receive a leather and wood steering wheel, very pretty in person. In terms of safety, the LHS came standard with dual front airbags. The passenger side one blended into the dash. Front seat mounted side airbags were optional. Ultra high tensile strength steel side guard door beams along with other reinforcements boosted side impact protection for the second generation LHS. A manual tilting steering wheel came standard while a power sunroof was optional. The LH cars were very forward thinking when it came to traditional luxury and simplicity. Clever chassis packaging led to excellent shoulder and hip room, especially important as the Concorde had the option of a full bench seat up front to carry up to six passengers. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds, both sitting still and on the road. Now we'll go ahead and shut her up and check out some of the interior features. The LHS was available with two Infinity 2 spatial imaging sound systems. The standard 240 watt setup shown here consists of nine speakers and features an in-dash CD and cassette player along with AM and FM radio. A fine setup for the day that's easy to listen to with a nice balance of power. Around this time, or perhaps even the years following, Chrysler also began offering a small in-dash navigation system for these cars. The optional sound system put out 360 watts and added two additional speakers and a four-disc in-dash CD changer. A new feature for 2001 was the addition of steering wheel radio controls located on the back of the upper spokes. The placement is very natural and ergonomic and continues to be used in numerous Chrysler products to this day. Up top you have padded visors with an auxiliary sunshade off to the right as well as illuminated vanity mirrors that you can dim. There's an auto dimming rear view mirror, and in the top stack, two reading lamps, as well as a driver information system and three position garage home link. Off to the right, you have a compass and your outside temperature by that button right there, and this one cycles through the other menus, such as a digital clock, you can have it blank, fuel data, and more. You can change the units right there and reset some of your fuel parameters with the reset button. By far one of my favorite features of the LHS and 300M's interior is the analog clock located right in the middle of the dash. There's the Chrysler emblem right in the middle and matches the white face and black needles and stuff of the instrument cluster. Continuing down the center stack, 
You have an electronic automatic single zone climate control system in the very top, very easy to use, fan speed off to the left, one touch automatic, temperature right there, AC, different zones, and front and rear defrost. There's even an audible beep that lets you know when you make a selection. The radio is pretty typical of any Chrysler product of this era. There's an in-dash CD player. Some cars even had the option of a CD changer that would go in that little tray right there. Is your graphic equalizer, fade, balance, different preset stations and controls for the tape deck, as well as rewind, fast forward, changing the different modes between CD, tape, AM, FM, and all that good stuff. Traction control to the right of the steering column. In the very bottom is a lighter ashtray and or 12 volt power outlet. The underside of the dash is all wrapped in soft touch material, and it flows into portions of the center console up into the gear selector right there. Then you have a little bit of harder material before you come into a full padded armrest. The cup holders are hidden into the center console unless you want them, just push in and they automatically pop out. Open up the console, you have a pretty decent amount of space. There's chain storage right there, CD storage, and a 12 volt power outlet. Like I talked about at the beginning of the video, the only real controls on the steering wheel consist of your cruise control to either side and radio controls on the back of the airbag cover, similar to like you have in newer Chrysler products. Your intermittent wipers and turn signal stalk is located to the left, lighting controls on the far left hand side of the dash, and your interior lighting dimmer. Alrighty. So let's go ahead and shut her down. Now we'll go ahead and check out backseat comfort, space, and amenities. All right, so backseat environment of the Chrysler LHS. I mean, it's your typical full-size American luxury sedan. There's a ton of room back here. The back seat, extremely plushy. There's some subtle differences here and there between the 300M. The seats are a little bit different. They're a lot softer. They've got a lot more padding in the upper cushion. You have these fixed headrests back here. Other than that, it's pretty much identical to a 300M. Unlike the 300M though, being that the cars do share the same length wheelbase, the LHS actually has two and a half inches of additional rear leg space, which is awesome, especially for more of a traveling vehicle. And speaking of seat padding, the comfort back here is absolutely incredible. I mean, combined with the extra leg space, the seats just kind of lean back a little bit. That feels like a big couch, basically. A lot of padding in the lower cushion, the upper cushion, and there's actually pretty decent lower back support as well. But you just lean your head back, kick back and relax. I mean, it's, it's awesome. As far as interior space with a comfortable seating position for myself in front, I'm 5 foot 10. I easily have more than half a foot of leg space, maybe even 7, 8 inches or so. Head space is probably around 3 inches. Of course, the LHS, like the 300M, can seat up to 5 people. In certain trim levels of the Concorde, you actually had a bench seat up front so you can seat up to 6 people. But when you're in the middle, you really don't compromise on head space a little bit. So it's still maybe... I don't know, two and a half, three inches or so, um, you might lose like a half inch of space overall. There's a pretty big drivetrain hump right here, so you're gonna have to straddle it, but there's so much leg space to either side, I don't see that being a problem for anybody sitting back here, especially, I mean, even if you sit three full-size adults, I think everyone would be more than comfortable. As far as amenities, it's a pretty simple vehicle overall. I mean, you have grip handles up top, reading lamps, code hooks to either side. Of course, the ashtrays right here, like I mentioned a second ago. You have two air vents down below, storage pockets on the back of the seats, as well as a full padded armrest that also incorporates storage, two cup holders, and a trunk pass-through if you need some extra storage. Chrysler really did an excellent job when it came to these LH cars. I mean, a beautifully designed interior, very comfortable, very roomy, and awesome build quality for the time. So let's go ahead and check out the trunk space. Thanks to the added length over a 300M, the LHS and the Concorde for that matter boasted more trunk space. It's a total of 18.7 cubic feet compared to 16.8 cubic feet in the 300M. Therefore, if you're carrying a carload of people, the larger cars were better equipped to handle that additional luggage. However, the 300M still had greater flexibility with being able to stow longer items with its 60-40 split folding rear seat.
The LHS's rear seat was fixed, but it featured a trunk pass-through in the middle for skis and the like. Underneath the trunk floor is a temporary spare tire, while a matching full-size tire and rim set were also available. Everything is lined in carpeting, including the trunk lid, which is supported by a pair of external gas charge struts to maximize storage space over hanging trunk arms. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at this 2001 Chrysler LHS. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's always a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.